Hi, my name is Tony Kovach, and I'm the artist in residence here at Liberty Bellows in Philadelphia. I want to welcome you back to our series of instructional videos for the piano accordion. In our last lesson, we talked about techniques for playing Irish music. Today, we're going to talk about techniques for playing Scottish accordion styles, and we're going to apply it to our new song of the day, Donald John the Taylor. By now, you've probably noticed that a popular ornament in Irish music is the rapid repetition of a single pitch. So far, we've alternated between two fingers to achieve this. We've used two, three and one, two. Today's song features a more advanced technique called the roll, in which you use several fingers in a rapid sequence. We're gonna start with our fourth finger on A. You're going to play four, three, two, one, all four fingers in a row. Practice this new technique until you can play it at this speed. Not only does this help us to play faster, but it also gives us a rapid and detached articulation characteristic of Scottish music. Another common feature of Scottish music is the use of a dotted rhythm. The dotted rhythm sounds like this. Long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. So let's imagine we're playing Mary Had a Little Lamb with straight eighth notes, just like this. If you change that to a dotted rhythm, the first note of every pair is going to be longer than the second, just like this. Long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. Let's play Mary Had a Little Lamb just like that with a dotted rhythm. A characteristic rhythm in Scottish music is the reverse dotted rhythm. So instead of playing long, short, we're going to play short, long, short, long, short, long. To illustrate this, I'm going to continue to play the song with a dotted rhythm, but anytime I get to the word little, I'm going to play a short long instead of a long short. The first chord of today's song is A minor, so let's play an A minor scale. You're going to shift after the third finger. However, the key signature of our song says that there is one sharp, F sharp. So let's play the A minor scale with an F sharp. By now you should recognize that scale, which is major and minor sounding, as the Dorian scale. Let's play our A Dorian again. We're going to start on A minor for four beats. Then we go down to G for four beats, back to A minor for four beats, and then we're going to play three chords very rapidly. We're going to play one beat of E minor, one beat of G major, and then two beats of A minor. That last section goes like this, E minor, G, A minor. So the whole progression sounds like this, A minor, G, A minor, E minor, G, A minor. In fact, that progression is the progression for the entire song. You're going to play it four times in a row. All of this will come in handy during our song of the day, Donald John the Taylor. You'll find that throughout the song, we're mostly going to be highlighting the chords that we're playing in the left hand. Right out of the gate, we're going to play that roll. So you're going to play G, and then E with your thumb, and then on the note A, you're going to play a roll, four, three, two, one. So again, that will look like this. Then we're gonna stay in this position and play C with our third finger. After that, you're going to shift up and put your thumb on D, and then play D, E, G. Those last two notes, E and G, that's our characteristic reverse dotted rhythm. 
For this phrase, you're gonna start by playing two Gs rapidly with your second finger and your thumb. Notice again, that is our reverse dotted pattern. Then you're going to play B, G, G rapidly using your second and first finger on the G again. That will sound like this. And then starting with your pinky on D, you're going to descend down the scale. The next phrase mimics the A minor phrase. The only difference is we play an A as the very last note instead of a G. Again, that's. Let's play those first three phrases. The next phrase starts with your fourth finger on G. You're going to play G, E, D. And then you're going to play G again, but this time with your pinky. So that's gonna sound like this. Then you put your second finger on B. And then you're going to substitute your middle finger on the A. So notice how our hand creeps down with this fingering. That whole measure sounds like this. That puts us in the perfect position to repeat everything we've played. When you repeat the phrase, the first three measures are going to be identical. It's only that last measure that's going to change. At this point, we're going to start the phrase the same way with four, two, and one. And then we're going to play G again with our pinky. And then we're going to reach down and play the B with our second finger. And that puts us in a position to play the B section. The B section starts with three A's in a row, one in the lower octave with your thumb, and then you're going to play the higher octave with your pinky, and then you're going to play that same note again but with your fourth finger. Listen to that effect. That's going to give us a nice detached repetition. After that we have another reverse dotted rhythm. Here it is again. Then we're going to start with our thumb on E. If you put those two together, it sounds like this. The next part sounds just like the beginning of the B section. Then we're going to play E, F sharp, G with our thumb, second, and third finger. And then D with our thumb. Then we're going to play G again, but with our pinky this time. And that allows us to reach down to the B with our second finger. and then we repeat the section. This measure is going to be almost identical to the ending of the first phrase, but it ends on an A. So the B section sounds like this. Join us next time as we discuss techniques for playing Scandinavian music. Thanks for watching.